We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletop, tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. As uh, social media works too, we're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Best ways for questions come through the website. We're not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. This week, we've got a question from Charles Baruch, who writes, Let's say I had a $50 check and the stipulation is I use it for fun. What are the 10 games I should consider? All right, great question, Charles. I dig this one. I don't know. I, I, I just like the vibe of this one. So first off, I'm gonna gonna kind of classify things. I'm gonna take this to mean, for whatever reason, Charles can buy one game. So he's got 50 bucks and he can only buy one game. So I'm gonna be looking at this as the best games you can get that cost under 50 bucks and not how many he can get for 50 bucks. Cause that would be a totally different way to look at, right? Like for 50 bucks, how many great games can I, I can get the mind and I can get all these little pocket games. I don't know. No, I'm looking at, you're buying one game for 50 bucks. Here's a selection of 10 of the best. Uh, while I'm using amazon.ca uh, for mine and I'm ignoring sale pricing. So my games are gonna be a little different than uh, what you're going off of. Yeah, cause I'm gonna use amazon.com and I'm going by the prices I, right now, right now being earlier today when I, when I wrote up the show notes for this. Now I am gonna be using the current sale prices. If I was gonna use MSRP, this would probably be a very different list. I'm also not going to account for taxes or shipping at this point. Cause Amazon, you're only taxed if you're in a certain state and while well, shipping is usually free at Amazon, I'm not gonna account for shipping to Canada. Yep. Uh, now, now I noticed, I noticed in, the com in the comments, Ryan's already brought up Board Game Bliss. Uh, I actually considered using Board Game Bliss for mine. The problem is they don't stock anything. So the whole concept no. was you could go out right now and buy something for 50 bucks, but any of the games I would have wanted that were under 50 bucks on Board Game Bliss weren't available. So. Yeah. I, I really do like the prices of Board Game Bliss, but they have got a real stock problem that uh, I'm not sure how to address. So, yeah, they, they don't want to take the chance of keeping stuff in stock. I don't know. I'd like yeah. they're almost better to list a two out two week shipping time so they can get it in from their their supplier. Yeah, you know. But yeah, Sean and I were discussing it, and I like I've seen Sean's list. He's seen my list. We actually did our own list this time, so that's something different for the show this week. And I saw his list. And I'm like, oh, there's no way you can get this for under 50 bucks he's like nope and i'm like look it's on board game list like look sold out yep. i'm like jesus how about this no <laughs> sold out oh, how about that no sold out yeah like if they, if it's sold out don't list it or something i don't know well Just, you can sort annoyed. by what's in stock at least yeah and that was then that was what happened when i went to board game bliss the first thing i did is said sort by price in stock only and i went down the list going i don't want any of this crap so. yeah <laughs> i guess that's true all right, the other thing with this list is I don't know exactly what Charles' taste in games is. So I'm going to be looking for some of the best games I've played at this press point. Games I think are going to appeal to most gamers. And I also tried to make sure to get a variety of types of games. Like, honestly, if I was shopping for myself, I, there's a couple games on here I probably wouldn't have listed, but I wanted to make sure I kind of touched all the bases because I wanted to make sure I could touch pretty much anything Charles might be into. Now, this is my list. So if Charles is all about party games, uh, he's probably going to strike out on this list. Uh, now, for my list, I, I tend to be more of a family gamer. So I you know, tend to avoid more of the heavy Euros and go for something that I'm going to be able to play with my kids or, or adults. But, mm -hmm. you know, a lot uh, a lot more of the lighter weight, I guess, yes. is than, uh, than no, yours. Family weight games, lighter weight games. Yep. Fair enough. All right, so my first recommendation is completely cheating, and it's only valid for those of you right now, is if you go to Amazon, they dropped a huge Star Wars sale today. They have up to 70% off on various games, and they have Star Wars Imperial Assault for 60% off. Like, that, that you, like there's your buy. Go buy it right now. Uh, now, I got to admit, probably won't stay in tomorrow. I haven't checked, but I bet you it's probably sold out now, to be honest. I haven't looked in about four hours. Um... I'm sure when I do this up as a blog toast, I won't be able to use Imperial Assault. Uh, <laughs> there's no way it's going to be at that price. If you can get Imperial Assault for under 50 bucks, there you go. Done deal. Just buy that. We've talked about Imperial Assault many times. Great value, even at full price. Like, I actually strongly recommend this game at full price. Not only do you get a great competitive or cooperative campaign game, you get a great two-player miniature skirmish game as well. Yeah. Now, in my list, I mostly stayed away from the licensed games because of the very reason that they generally raise the price. Uh, generally, aside from sales like this, you're best to stay away from licensed games uh, that are on the lower end of the scale that would fit into your budget because yeah. those lower ones are kind of 
the iffy licensed games, you're you yeah. generally the, the more pricey ones are going to be the more solid licensed products. Just ignore anything by Riverhouse. They they you can get them for under fifty now, but they're sixty dollar games and they're not worth the price you can get them at now. Right. All right. Second recommendation comes from the same sale. Uh, again, I'm cheating here. Star Wars Armada. It's only forty four oh two right now, like fifty five percent off. It's ridiculous. This is a miniature battle game that operates at a fleet scale for Star Wars. So you're talking capital ships and big movements and little fighters. Uh, very different from X Wing. And uh, that's for. Uh... 98% of our fans who aren't here live. Oh, and we're being told it's sold out already. So, oh, there you go. Even so though you go. When, when I made this list live. this morning, yeah, <laughs> when I made this list, all right, so we're not even going to count those, right? I, we said we we're going to give 10 games. I'm not even going to count those two. I was hoping to give our chat room a heads up on some amazing deals there before they sold out. But yeah, I, I didn't expect that one to last, but there was always a chance. But you never know with Amazon, these two games could stay under 50 bucks tomorrow or in two weeks from now. Um, the only thing I can say is follow at tabletop underscore deals on Twitter. And I'll let you know if I see him drop that low again. There we go. All right. So here are 10 games. Well, 10 games for me uh, that you should be able to get from under 50 on Amazon right now. None of these should be sold, sold out. Uh, Deanna will probably verify it with us in the chat. These ones weren't lightning deals. These weren't deal of the day. They should still be good. So I'm going to start off with Shogun. Uh, when I checked the price this morning, it was $47.99. Uh, everyone who listened to this should know how much I love Shogun. Uh, you may recognize it as the name Wallenstein. I actually prefer Shogun. It's uh, like the feudal Japan theme. This is a mix of a Euro-style area majority scoring mixed with cube-pushing folk on a map area control battling. Uh, toss in the very cool mechanic of the cube tower for battles, and you have one of my favorite games of all time. It, it might be my number one. Like, I, every time I play this game, I love it. Every time I talk about this game, it makes me want to play it again. I have loved this game for years. Every year on my birthday, I used to force people to play. And, well, for, you know what? Force them to play because everyone's scared of it. It's an intimidating-looking game. So, and it's so much better than Immortals. But, yes. <laughs> sadly, you're not going to find that under 50 bucks in Canada. Uh, you might be able to find Immortals. You are. And, the, <laughs> and to be honest... Uh, Brian's asking in the chat room if you can find the big box for a good price. You don't want to. The the expansions you add with the big box, I don't think actually improve the game. I think they muddy the game up. They give you options you don't need. I am actually not a fan of that. And they're just three small expansions that are tossed in. That was one of those, I know, to me, queen marketing things that they even made a big box for that. It, it's almost like queenie level of little additional stuff. Just stick to the base game. All right. And that was Shogun. All right, another big box queen game, uh, same size box, similar mechanic, and that's Amerigo. Wow, when I looked earlier this morning, it was forty-five twenty-three on Amazon. This is another game that uses a cube tower, but in a very different way. Uh, and this Steffenfeld point salad, the cubes that come out of the tower determine which actions you can take. And then the number of cubes tell you how powerful they are. And then there's a bias on every round that a certain color is going to come out, but it's not necessarily true because of the way the tower works. Uh, this is one of my favorite all-time felds. It's an exploration game. You're building islands. You're building buildings. I actually want to... I got to play this one again soon. It's been a while since I broke this out. It's a bigger, heavier game, but one of my favorite felds of all time. And remember, it's a point salad. The cubes are not edible. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> and that not. is Amerigo. Anything's edible if you try hard enough. <laughs> All right, up next, uh, away from the felds, away from the big box games to something a little smaller, at least in profile. Uh, that is Orleone. You can get this for $45.98. Uh, in my opinion, this is one of the best modern board games out there. This is one of the best games to come out in the last four years. Uh, it's a Euro bag builder, truly fantastic. By far my favorite game that Tasty Minstrel Games has put out. It's hit the table multiple times. And I've never gotten sick of it. I've actually got some expansions for it. And I want to play them, but like I enjoy the base game so much that I tend to sit down and like, oh, let's just play the base game because let's get going. We don't have to learn something new. Huge fan of Orléans. Yeah, this uh, this one's even affordable in Canada. Oh, interesting. That's good to know. I, seriously, like this, if you were into a, a step above Terraforming Mars for weight or a step above Race for the Galaxy, just that little bit heavier, you're going to love this game. Up next, Roll for the Galaxy. This was currently 4084. Now, I will admit, I generally prefer Race for the Galaxy. But if you're going to spend the money, why not get the more deluxe, thicker components, lots of dice, dice cups, 
cooler looking role for the galaxy. Plus, I know that most people out there, most people I talk to, most podcasts I listen to actually prefer it to Race for the Galaxy. This is their preferred for the Galaxy game. So I'm going to put that on the list. Despite the fact I do prefer Race, I do really like Roll for the Galaxy, and it's a solid game. Now, I've always got a game going of this on Board Game Arena. I just can't disagree. It's a solid game. All right, just mentioned it. We'll bring it up again. Terraforming Mars. You knew this had to be on the list, but this one has to be on sale to get at this point. Uh, it's had to be here. If I, if you can get it for under 50, just buy it. It, it. It's it's normally a little bit more than that. It's been this price. It's been 45 bucks on Amazon, 35% off for like um, two months now. So I don't know what's going on with that, why it's still on sale or when that's going to end. But uh, this is probably the one that's going to have the most universal appeal that like every game, almost every green group is going to like this. I, I've met very few people who don't like Terraforming Mars. Now, if you're totally into your party games or dexterity games, OK, maybe not. But if you're into Euros at all, uh, this is almost a bust buy for everyone. Yeah, no, a great classic that us Canadians pay through the nose for. <laughs> yep, unfortunately. All right, uh, next is a $40 game, $39.99. That is Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. I think it's the full title of this one. Uh, this is my most iffy recommendation, but I wanted to make sure I had at least one cooperative game on the list. Like I said, I don't know what Charles is looking for. So I wanted to make sure I had at least one co-op on there. And for a co-op for 50 bucks, this is the game I personally would pick. Now, I personally love the Legendary Encounter system. I like that way better than the base Legendary games. You're probably not even going to get me to sit down at a table to play Legendary Marvel, but I love Legendary Encounters. Uh, the Alien one so far is the best of the bunch. does a great job of catching the, catching the tension of the Alien movies with the hidden movement and everything going on and having to work it together. Fantastic game. Yeah, and this game is quite expandable as well, so if you grow out of it or just love it that much, there's uh, a bunch more you can get into. Yeah, if you pick up the Predator version, I guess you can actually do an Aliens versus Predator, right. which just sounds makes sense. Really cool. All right, another heavier Euro Viticulture. Uh, the most current printing would be the Essentials Edition from Stonemaier Games, which you can pick up for forty five eighteen. Uh, this wine based worker placement game completely blew me away when it came out. Uh, it still stands the test of time, even. Having now played Vinhos, which is a very similar themed game, to me, they're both very different games, very different mechanics, and both scratch different itches and are both fantastic. There are so many mechanics to love here. I love the way the wine ages and you want to kind of wait to use it, but sometimes you need it. How you improve your vineyard with little meeples to represent all the improvements you've made and the way that you play through different seasons and use your workers in different seasons and visitors coming in. Uh, this is still one of my favorite Stonemaier games. Really dig Viticulture Essential Edition. And that Essential Edition removes the old requirement that I used to say, if you have Viticulture, you have to buy Tuscany. You get the best of Tuscany in the Essentials Edition. And much like fine wine, not all the best ones cost the most. Yeah, very true. <laughs> I've had some very good, very cheap wine. All right, next is Agricola for $47.99. Now, generally, everyone always compares Agricola and Caverna. It's hard not to. Same designer, one released after the other, the other being a follow-up. Uh I personally am always going to pick Caverna, but you're never going to find that for under 50 bucks. Or if you do, good job, grab it. Uh, for right now, there's no way you're going to find Caverna at that price. Agricola is still a very solid game. I'm never going to turn down a chance to play. If someone asks me to play, I'm not going to say no. I'm going to be like, oh, no, bring out Caverna. No, if they ask me to play Agricola, I'll play it, or Agricola. But yes, personally, I'd rather play the other. Yes, it can be tight. Yes, it can be punishing. There's a reason people call it Misery Farm. But I personally think that's a feature, not a flaw. I like how tight this game is. I like how you never have enough resources and how you're always stressing out about trying to feed your family. Yeah, it's still over a decade old and still in the top 30 games of all times. I didn't realize it's a decade old. It doesn't feel that old. Yeah, it was 2007. It's over a decade old. Wow. All right, it's another Feld. You can tell I'm a Feld fan, and Felds <laughs> tend to be at this right price point, right? I happen to check this. Just just barely scratches under at $49.99. You can get the brand new printing of Castle Burgundy just released this month. 
Uh, this looks significantly better than the original is probably the most polite thing I can say. Uh, there are a huge number of complaints about the original Castles of Burgundy and its draw, drab, blah, colors all look the same. So they put out an updated deluxe version and it's slightly brighter browns and grays and dark greens. I got I, I don't get it. I was really hoping this new release would pop a bit more, but I got to say, you know what? It looks boring. Don't let the the dry paste on theme fool you. This is a fantastic dice driven tile drafting heavy euro game from Steffenfeld. Yeah, it's a euro. It doesn't have to look pretty to make you think. Up next, for 45 bucks, you can pick up Clank. This is my 10th recommendation. It's my last one. Uh, Clank refreshes the mechanic of deck building by adding the push-your-luck dungeon crawl aspect of the game. How deep do you dive? Do you risk trying to get through artifacts, or do you just jump in and out quickly and hope the dragon catches the other players? A very solid deck builder on its own as well. Now, a lot of people seem to prefer Clank in space. Personally, I find it adds a little too much link to the game, and it's a little too fiddly. I like the, the dash and go you can have in the original game. Yeah, sadly, I wanted on this on my list, but you're not going to get it under 50 bucks in Canada without some effort. So uh, That's hard to say. All right, I went into this with the assumption that Charles was looking for board games. But you know what? He might be more interested in RPGs. Just in case, uh, I'm not going to do 10 because that's we're going to be here all night if we keep just doing 10 on every possible variation on this. Here are five RPG recommendations that you can currently get for under 50 bucks. Uh, number one is going to be the Star Trek Adventures core rulebook for the newest game from Modifius Entertainment. This is the latest Star Trek game to come out, the current license for Star Trek. Uh, you can get the core rulebook for $37.90. I love playing Star Trek. One of the best RPG experiences I've ever had was running Star Trek. It happened to be the fastest system, but I don't think that mattered because everyone knows Trek. They know the tropes. They know the techno babble. They know the world. It's just so easy to role play Trek and everyone just gets it. And this is the latest game and the reviews are extremely positive. Yeah. The, the last time we played, I actually spent the entire drive down from Toronto at the time to Windsor listening to how to speak scottish because yeah. i was playing an engineer so yeah we, we weren't stereotyping much in that no, game, no 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 and yes the the actual box set can be had for even less but i figured if you were going to go out 50 bucks you may as well go with the full core rule book and dive right in uh ryan's asking if you could get get the the intro box set you can all right up next i gotta recommend dungeons and dragons now i'm not saying it because it's huge right now like possibly bigger than it's ever been I've played every edition of D&D that's been out. Well, actually not true. Since second edition, I did play a couple games of AD&D, and technically I played one game of OD&D that made me hate the system for many years. But I played many of the editions, and I got to say the new fifth edition is really good. It is the most fun I have had playing D&D since second edition. Now, you know, for 50 bucks, you can get a player's handbook. That's the MSRP. They're $49.99. Uh, you can obviously find that cheaper. I've uh, you can also get the D&D starter set for it's been as low as 12 bucks, which is crazy. It's not that low right now. Or the new D&D Essentials Kit, which was a Target exclusive, but is now available everywhere. Now, I wasn't sure where to start if I was going to dive into running 5th at D&D because I have not actually run it. I played it a few times. And it seems like still the best place to start is the starter set. The um, Minds of Fandelver adventure that is in that is supposedly fantastic. One of the best D&D adventures ever published and what I learned the other day is you actually make characters it's not a here's your pre-gen and go so I think that's going to get you more immersed into D&D than any of the other things now for a while you could actually get the core rulebook gift set that had all three books and a DM screen for 50 bucks but it seems like at this point that ship has passed when I went to write this list I was hoping to be able to find that but it seems like it's gone Now, if I had 50 bucks and I had to buy an RPG, I would be grabbing the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition starter set. I have been a fan of Woofrup Warhammer since the game came out in 1986. I think I picked it up that year at 
up in Toronto at the Silver Snail and have been a, in love with that setting. Uh, you can see a pile of Warhammer Games Workshop stuff behind me. Uh, this has been my go-to world to run games in for years. I have played this one. I have played every edition release, but I haven't had the time or the money or the group to check out fourth edition uh, Warhammer. So if I had 50 bucks, I'd be like, I'm buying it. I'm going to buy the new starter set. I did get to see it at Origins, and man, it is a beautiful box set. That's All right, if Cyberpunk is your thing... Our Telsorian has dropped the new edition, Cyber Cyberpunk Red. Uh, they have a jumpstart kit. It's under 50 bucks. From what I understand, Cyberpunk's back to its 2020-2013 um, roots, D10-based system. Uh, they basically decided to completely ignore version 3.0, which was much maligned by the, the fan base. I've heard nothing about good, nothing but good things about this new edition of the classic game from Mike Pondsmith, released from Our Telsorian Games. Gotta love uh, Cyberpunk 2020. And actually came up last night on uh, Misdirected. They were doing their discussion on life paths. And, mm -hmm. uh, Traveler, and uh, Traveler and Cyberpunk were uh, much discussed. There you go. So the original, I don't, the original didn't have a life path. Did it? Did it? Cybergen had one. No, no. 20, 2020 had a cyber, uh, it was a mild, it was more of a background path. Than, okay, uh, I did. I was going to say, because we used to use the one from Mechton. Because you could, you could, but you could roll things like you know hot dates and fast cars, and, and it didn't yeah, do yeah. anything. But it okay. was, yeah, it was. Because I know other Artosaurian systems had actually had a really yeah. solid life path. Yeah, system. the Mechton, the Mechton one was. Yeah, that was one we used to steal, and we'd yeah, use yeah. that one. All right, now if you like your whole cyberpunk thing, but like elves and magic mixed in there, you can get the new Six World source book for Shadowrun for under fifty bucks. That's the core rule book, not just an intro box set. Now, Shadowrun's never been my thing. Uh, the system has a ton of fans over the years. It's still around. And for those of you complaining, the system's too fiddly and uses too many D6s. This new 6th Age edition is supposed to streamline all of that. Now, at Origins, I did pick up the new starter set because I keep saying I'm going to finally give Shadowrun a try. I, mean, I, I avoided it for years. I, I feel like I'm missing some geek cred by not playing it, but I still haven't had a chance to dive into that. Yeah, no, my uh, my Cyberpunk doesn't have pointy ears in it. So. <laughs> that, that's why I put both on the list. Just say if you like cyberpunk with or without pointy ears. Yep. Now, for those of you outside of Canada, you might not be aware of the kinds of pricing that we tend to get here. Very few of those games, mochos, are available to us here under 50 bucks without dealing with a massive sale, uh, with some soaring up to easily double or more of the prices that he's mentioned. Now, for my take, I went something more for us Canadians, but also more family-oriented, because those are the games that get to the table for me. Uh, and to start off, I went with Scrabble or Upwards. For $39, bucks, uh, you, there are various different versions and costs, but, you know, for, for under $50, bucks, no home should be without a copy of Scrabble or Upwards. Yeah, just don't come to Windsor and play with Deanna. She'll win. Like, I've given up. We don't need Scrabble on our host, or Upwards, or Boggle, or any other vocabulary based game it's it's just not fun playing that anymore and just losing repetitively well you married a librarian so yes. you know <laughs> uh next up azul for 48 dollars. i think we've made our case for this sufficiently over the episodes yeah it's a totally solid recommendation like i actually consider putting it on my list but it's just it was a little too short in u.s for that 50 dollar target you get you can almost get two copies of azul for the same price yep uh, next up, King Domino. Uh, on the lower end, $26, but it's such a great game, and it leaves you with some extra money. You can buy something else along with it. There you go. Yeah, solid recommendation. I'm a, I'm a fan of this one. Light and quick, but solid game. Yeah. Uh, Hogwarts Battle. Okay, so my one licensed game. Uh, I get the deck builders aren't for everyone, but for under 50 bucks, Hogwarts Battle is a solid deck builder, and it's great for both kids and adults. Yeah, no complaints here. I enjoyed the few times I played it. That's not, I got to break that out with Big G again. I, I like the fact it was one of those variable market deck builders. And, oh, come on, Harry Potter, right? And almost everyone loves Harry Potter. Exactly. Uh, next up, Sagrada for 45 bucks. A great game and Canadian as well. Yeah, you can actually meet the designer at Breakout Con in March. Uh, great recommendation. Great game. Absolutely. Great guy. I was uh, at a couple of his panels last year. Uh, next up, for $34, Patchwork. A great, quick, thinky filler. Yeah, that one's cheaper than I thought. I, I swear I paid more than that for Patchwork. That's good. Uh, what's weird about that? I never hear anyone talk about this game anymore. 
it's it's like the the hype has died off on that, and it's a shame because it's really solid. Deanna and I continue to enjoy it. Yep. Uh, next up, the one that uh, sort of caught my eye was the Quest for El Dorado. For thirty six dollars, you get card drafting, deck building, family fun. Yeah, I've heard good things about this one. I haven't played it myself, but it's been around for a while. It's on a lot of top lists. It seems really popular. Yep. Uh, and then we have uh, Splendor. $39. It's a classic for a reason, even if some people have moved on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I don't play it much. <laughs> but my kids are playing my copy now, so it's getting plenty of use. Yep. Uh, and now, I couldn't do this on Amazon. I had to go elsewhere. But <laughs> if you hunt around in Canada, go cuckoo for 25 bucks. You'll just buy it. You'll thank us. Yeah, that, that's I, that's a good price for that. Because the one thing with Gokuku is like you got a metal tin, you got all those sticks, you got a wooden meeple. I don't know the plastic or whatever the eggs are made out of. It is not a cheap game, especially for something marketed at little kids. But you know what? I like for the amount I played that game. If you do that whole math, where you're like, oh, the amount I spent divided by the number of times I played, like I'm probably at pennies a play at this point. Yep. Uh, and uh, finally, for $16. Hanabi. I've been playing it on BGA a ton. It's just a fun game worthy of having in your collection. Uh, if you go on Board Game Bliss, you can find the Deluxe for under 50 bucks, but of course it's out of stock. What? Stuff out of stock on Board Game Bliss? Say it ain't so. All right, so we did, Sean and I sat down earlier today and went through this, and we did our own research, we did our own thing, we kind of compared lists, and I realized earlier, like later in the day, before the show went live, that every game I mentioned here, I own I, I, all 10 of them, which makes sense, right? Like, that's why I recommend them. These are all great games I own, right? And I was, I brought up my pile of games, right? The pile that's behind me here for our backdrop. And I'm like, hey, I own all these. So what would I say if I had 10 bucks or 50 bucks and I had to go buy games, right? So this is what I figured I would go buy. Now I got to say, first thing it is, I build it up. My, my Amazon wish list, and I saw 59, 58, 56, 55, 51, 99. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I need a $60 budget for most of the games at the very top of my wish list. But I did manage to find 10 games I want pretty badly for under 50 bucks. Now, that's gonna, I'm going to go through these a lot quicker than earlier. I'm not going to describe the games in full detail, but up first is going to be Merlin, a uh, Rondell based Steppenfeld game. Got to try this at Origins. Three Rondells, great Arthurian theme, really cool game. Merlin's number one. Men at Work is a dexterity game from Pretzel Games. The people that bring you junk art and flick them up. This one's all about like stacking your workers and stuff. Looks fantastic. Uh, Clans of Caldonia. Now, I am told that if you dig Terra Mystica and or Gaia Project, that this is the next step. This is even better. And I love both those games. So this looks sweet to me. Uh, Renegade Games, Architects of the West Kingdom. Uh, this is another one I've heard really good things about. I probably should be more excited about the Paladins one, but you know what? I kind of want to play the games in the order they were released just because I loved Raiders of the North Sea so much. I don't feel like skipping ahead in the series. I want to discover them all. And people are saying Architects is better than Raiders, and I love Raiders. Uh, Starship Samurai, this one no one knows about. Plaid Hat Games put out a Gundam game where you have giant mecha and you have the space battles and the space fleets, and it just looks really cool. Now, I have heard nothing about this. I haven't even seen a single review, but I just got to try this game. It just looks so cool because it looks like it's getting that whole Robotech Gundam space battle with mecha Voltron thing in a board game format. It just looks great. I really want to try that. Uh, this is the one cheaper one, uh, Space Base. I might be able to get two copies for 50 bucks, but every time I talk about my love of Valeria, Someone has to butt in and say, but space base. So I want to try it. I want to know, is it really better than Valeria? I love me some Valeria. So we want to see if space base is actually the better dice based resource generation game. Next, I got Coimbra. Uh, this is one of the best meaty euros to come out in the last few years. That's been on sale for the last few weeks. So you can get it for under 50 bucks. One I really want to try. Uh, another one that was a Target exclusive, it actually came out while we still had Target in Windsor, and I actually went there a couple times trying to find this, but of course, Target in Windsor didn't stock, but Target in the States stocks, and that's Clask. Uh, this is a really unique kind of air hockey-ish looking dexterity game. I, I don't know. It looks gimmicky to me, but everyone that owns it loves it. Everyone talks about how it's one of their favorites, so I definitely want to try that out. Another Origins holdover, Battlestar Galactica Starship Battle Starter Set. 
Now, this one is like, you have to spend 50 bucks yet to do it, as long as it's not my 50 bucks, because I'm probably wasting my money on this. But since seeing the game at Origins and watching a demo duel of two ships, I really want to try this game. It just looks really cool. The problem is, I'm sure, like, I don't play X-Wing or Armada now. When am I actually going to play Battlestar Galactica? I have no idea, but I want to check it out. I'll at least get Solon to play a couple games with me or something. Up next, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. This is another heavier game. People know I dig my heavy Euros. I have heard nothing but good things about this one, except Sean's opinion on the digital version, but I'm not going to hold that against the physical copy. Yep. And finally, another Feld, because I missed one, right? Uh, the last two years, I've been basically on a game buying embargo, right? I'm trying to get my games through work, through Tabletop Bellhop, and getting review copies. I missed over a Feld that came out called Oracle of Delphi. I just love Feld. Like, it, it's if a Feld comes out, I basically got to buy it. I got to try it. I totally, like, just, it came out in the middle of all stuff, and I never got a copy. All right. Well, that's quite the suggestion. Uh, quite quite the list there. Uh, Ryan does mention that uh, Tom Vass Vassal did review um, Starship Samurai. Uh, I'm sure people have. It's so just there was nothing there is, out there. There is some talk about it, but you're right. I don't think there's a lot. The uh, I'm, I'm looking here. There's only 470 reviews on Board Game uh, Geek, uh, which is yeah, pretty, that's low. pretty low. Yeah, I'll have to check out the Vassal review at some point. It just looks neat. It just looks like such a cool game, and I love the theme. I'm a big fan of those anime robot battles, right? Like, it, it, even going back to, like, Grandizer and all the, uh, the old Transor Z, and I don't know, big fan of the, the Japanese mecha anime, yep. something I grew up on. And yeah, with the Lorenzo El Magnifico, it really could be a good game, but they really did a bad job on the version I played digitally. Uh, it, I mean, the game, I, I couldn't even tell if it was a good game or not, because the <laughs> interface yeah. and everything about it was so badly done, in my opinion. I said that that's that's what people say. I've I've heard some the the, the digital that people love the the board version. Yep. No, absolutely. There you go. That that was like thirty five games you can get <laughs> for under fifty bucks. So come on, Charles. I hope we got you covered there. Got to be at least one there you want to buy. All right. All right. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email us at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Oh, I missed that. That's uh, all right. All right. So uh, Ryan's had uh, some comments here in the lobby for us. Um, he's asking if Jamaica is under $50. And, well, it looks like the MSRP is over. Uh, and she Games is telling us that uh, it's on sale right now. Personally, I would not recommend Jamaica. I had an extremely terrible experience with that game that was not fun at all, where one player just got ahead of everyone and won. They just kept going and couple of us in the back were playing cards on each other and there was this whole rock paper scissors thing i don't know i really did not enjoy jamaica when i played it mm -hmm. so i wouldn't recommend that one in the year of the dragon is a fantastic recommendation i didn't put it on the list because you can get it for like under 30 and to me that was just too low like i was trying to get stuff where you're like bang for your buck right i was trying to get the stuff that was like 49 bucks 45 bucks when making the list in the year of the dragon is actually one of my favorite felds of all time I love it. It's it's all about disaster mitigation. The Year of the Dragon must have been absolutely horrible for China because, wow, there's like fires and floods and revolts and all these terrible things happen. And it's all about trying to mitigate that. And I really enjoyed that twist because at the time, almost all the games you played were Empire Builders, right, where you're building stuff right. up, where this was more about your stuff's going to fall apart and trying to keep control. I really like that. So, right. yeah, I think that one's good. Now, Ryan's saying that Jamaica is a better game with more people, so... Yeah, that maybe that was the problem. I just, like, it was a bad enough experience. I wasn't even willing to try. Like, if I someone showed up and was like, we're going to play Jamaica, there's five of us to play, give it another shot, I probably would. But the other people I played with, like, the guy who brought the game sold it after that oh, experience. Geez. Like, it wow. was that... Like, Scott brought it out, was really excited to get it, because I guess it was hard to get at the time. We played twice in the same night, and then the next time I saw Scott, he's like, no, I sold Jamaica. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it did not go over well. Yeah. I don't know if it was who we were playing with. People played it extremely competitively. Now, I think the game's more meant to be kind of silly, take that fun, and that's not how we played it. And like I said, there was a runaway leader problem. Like, there there was no chance anyone was going to win. Right. And I can't remember now how, but it felt random. Like, it was just like, oh, or because he was first player, he won. It was something like that. Right. And I noticed we you mentioned at the beginning that you know if you if he's looking for party games he's going to be d disappointed. Well, at least one thing to say is there are a lot of party games out there under fifty bucks. 
oh, yeah. um like the like all the telestrations and you know code mm. names they're all under 50 bucks even in canada so that's definitely uh yeah that's, it's a that's totally different available. list like I'm, I'm almost willing to revisit the topic to see how many good games you can get for 50 bucks yeah, like actually. like like, can you build a game night for fifty bucks? I think would be an interesting, different way to look at that. But well, I think and that we'll save that. That day. becomes a very different thing if between Canada and America, because well, yeah. <laughs> you got well, a really you hard be doing, for your Canadian. You should have been doing seventy, yeah. right? Like just the exchange rate, just by taking in the exchange, not just the MSRP difference. Yeah, but just just the the exchange rate. You should have been doing whatever thirty percent more on fifty is. Yeah, that's a rough guess of whatever that works out to seventy or sixty eight or whatever <laughs> that probably would have made it a little more fair yeah possibly but uh yeah no it's 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 tough to tough to spend 50 bucks uh without wanting so much more here in canada oh yes <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I think a 50 dollar game night episode might be a, a cool one to do yep um i did see ryan noted space base and valeria stand on their own merits which is good to see yep um coin bro i haven't heard anything broken about it so he's noting that the coin break keeps hearing there's something broken about it. I haven't heard that yet, but I'm still way behind on podcasts. So maybe at that this point, people have figured that out. Uh, Deanna noted the Stranger Things Dungeons and Dragons role playing game starter set. I don't know, from what I hear, the adventure in there is so short that it's just not going to keep your group occupied for very long. Whereas the Fan Delver is not a one shot. It's it's very much a like you could be playing it for a year if your group doesn't meet that regularly. Like it's a it's a full campaign in a box almost. Like you're not getting to twentieth level or anything, but it's also not just a sit down, do the one dungeon, and you're done. Right. Oh. All right, I am not seeing. Uh, Ryan was asking uh, Agricola, all creatures, all big and small, fantastic two player game. Uh, it's all the animal parts. It's all the building fences and upgrading your buildings a bit and building pens and the animal husbandry where you're going to produce kids without all the other messy stuff in Agricola. Uh, the only thing is it's a lot of small bits. So while I dig it as a two-player game, it's not great for Deanna and I because most of the time we play two-player games, we go to pubs or cafes and it's a lot of little tiny meeple and, and resource tokens and stuff like that. And I worry we're going to lose some pieces. But if you're playing two-player at home, I think it's great. Um, as for accessibility, it's probably pretty good because all the meeple are different shapes, but then there are the building tiles. It, it, I think it might be a good recommendation for you, Ryan. Uh, and just uh, looking at some stats on Coimbra, and there does indeed seem to be a color and uh, player order problem in the game. Okay. Uh, that is skew That is statistically skewing the game. Oh, that's that's sad to see. Yeah. Uh, what and you know how much that will actually affect you is a different is is a different thing. But the statistics are showing some skewing. Yeah, that's it's one of those games you probably have to play it a lot before you see it. But yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That that's I'm I'm catching up on podcasts, but I'm still nowhere near God. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm just going to finish off by saying, I know we say it multiple times throughout the show, but if you got a question, please send us your questions. Questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Uh, we mean it. We're, we're not at the bottom of the barrel. We do have questions, but it's getting, we're getting a little picky now. And then there, there's some that, you know, we I think of appropriate questions. There's some questions we have that aren't the best questions. And there's some stuff we've already covered. I, we can only answer what are the best two player X so many times. <laughs> so We've got a we got a lot of repeat style questions. We could use some we could use some fresh blood, some fresh questions. Would love to see some new questions from everyone. We're here to answer your questions, but it only works if we've got your questions too.